Let's imagine if Warren Buffett tell you to give him some money, how much would you give it to him, right? So you probably gave him a lot of money, right? Why is that? Because he is an expert in his field. You know he's going to make a lot of money for you. So instead of trying to find it, before we try to do that, we actually have to be the expert in our niche. And then when you do that, people see that you have results and they trust you and like you. People only do business with it, they trust and like, right? If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, also your host for Raising Private Money. And I'm so excited to have my guest today. For almost seven years now, my guest has been trying to get into this real estate game and really hasn't had much success at all until recent years. He's tried everything. I mean, you name it, he's tried it. He's tried wholesaling houses. He's tried apartment investing, house flipping, um, and really couldn't get any of it to work. I mean, he's invested, you know, $150,000 in different programs trying to learn about real estate investing. And, you know, he just got totally frustrated, overwhelmed, and just didn't see this real estate investing thing taken off until in recent years, he discovered land. He's been investing in land and now he's done over 300 land deals all across the nation. And he's been doing it all from the comfort of his own home. In fact, his biggest land deal gave him a return of 1,000%. And now my guest is in the world of raising private money. So we're going to pick his brain about land deals, about raising private money. You're going to get to meet my guest, Ray John, right after this. Well, welcome to right. welcome to the show, Ray. I'm glad to have you. Thank you, Jay. I wish uh, I knew you earlier, so I don't have to uh, struggle that many years, right? So exactly, exactly. Well, um, well, Ray. You know, as you know, as I was just talking about. I mean, you've done all kinds of, or attempted to do all kinds of um, real estate deals, um, but you found your niche to be land. So here's the big first question, uh, Ray, and that is. What is about what is it about doing land that works for you? And you just couldn't get the, you know, single family houses, the apartments, uh, wholesaling. Why didn't why didn't those other strategies in real estate investing work? But why does land work for you? Uh, I think the biggest reason is uh, people do not have emotion attached to their land. And uh, think about it. A lot of people, they buy uh, a land. Uh, in let's say Florida, but they live in New York, and after so many years, they thought they're gonna build a, ho a house on there, but eventually they're not gonna come. But over the years, you know, what's grown on land, right? The weeds, the the grass, and the city asked them to uh, to clean it. They don't have time to fly there to cut it, so the city they give them the tickets. So sometimes they don't, you know. I I got like two land for free last year. They hate their land. 100%, right? So that's why I love land because it's super undervalued. And uh, excuse me, a lot of people don't see the value in it. And uh, even the some of the house investors as well. I talked to a house investor this morning. I asked him, what's your uh, contact rate? So if you send out the mailers, how many people are actually calling you back? He said it's about zero point one percent so he said he has to sign out a thousand letters to get one person to call back but for land it's you know roughly about three to five percent so think about it i'm 30 times you know better than 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 that house strategy so you know i can i can get a lot of deals happening right so 
Well, and of course, you know, one thing that's intriguing about the way you do the business is you're working virtually. You are doing this business uh, from your own home and you are investing in, are you investing in multiple markets? Yeah, I'm in about 45 different markets. I'm talking about counties as a market, right? And uh, in about 10 different states right now. I got you. So one reason you like land is because the people you talk to are not emotionally attached to the property. It sounds as though that in the past, you've talked to some people that were emotionally attached <laughs> to their property and the conversations were not so nice, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Especially with houses, uh, they have a lot of good memories inside. So it's very hard to uh, get a super good discount. Uh, but for land, it's very normal. We see we got a deal under uh, like 40% of the land value, or sometimes 10%, right? So it's really a miracle. Now, you've recently started raising private money uh, for your deals, but you've done a lot of deals without raising private money. Uh, what is it that came along that um, you decided, you know, I need, to, I need to raise some private money. I think you've used private money on uh, your last seven deals or so. Uh, what happened? So um, I actually right now raised some money for my students. Some of my students, they don't have money when they start off. So I do that. And when I first started land investing about, uh, uh, like when I first started this new way of doing land flipping, you know, I didn't want to put so much money into it. So I started to find uh, private uh, lenders, like people that have money, they want a, a decent return. Uh, I just tell them, I give you 15% 15, 15 of the deal. And uh, either it's the profit of the 15% or uh, the money side, right? So if you put a uh, 10,000 in, you get uh, 1,500 profit. Um, you know, I started to do that at the beginning, about the end of uh, 2021. I did about 10 deals there. And right now, I'm just uh, sometimes getting money for my students right now. I see. So where are you finding uh, your private lenders? You know, I get that question all the time uh, from a new real estate investor that's wanting to raise private money. They say, Jay, where do you find these, you know, private lenders to talk to? Uh, where do you find yours? Uh, you know, let's, uh, I, I, I want to think in the other way. Instead of trying to find, you just be who you are, right? So, uh, what do I mean by that? Let me let's imagine if Warren Buffett tell you to give him some money, how much would you give it to him? Right? So you probably gave him a lot of money, right? Why is that? Because he is an expert in his field. You know he's going to make a lot of money for you. So instead of trying to find it, before we try to do that, we actually have to be the expert in our niche. And then when you do that, people see that you have results and they trust you and like you. People only do business with it, they trust and like, right? And after that, you build up this uh, incredible credibility and then you can start to approach them, you know, give them, this is what are you going to get if you invest in this project or in yourself, right? And you can go to this different mastermind, like, uh, you know, you and me, are, we are, you know, uh, family mastermind and there are like tony robin has their platinum group and uh all people has their own uh, mastermind right so you can start to do that after you are the expert in your field but not before that you're not just go there and tell them hey i need money give it to me they're not going to give it to you so yeah i couldn't agree uh, i couldn't agree with you more ray um you know i've been raising private money since 2009 and uh, I've never asked for money. I've never pitched a deal. And people say to me, they say, Jay, how in the world have you got, you know, eight and a half million dollars in private money that you just move from project to project and single family house to single family house and you never ask for money? Well, here's the answer. I put on my teacher hat and I teach people. And of course, to teach them, you got to know what you're talking about. You got to be the expert, right. like you just said. And I teach people what private money is. Um, 
my wife and I, Carol Joy and I, we've got 44 private lenders right now, and none of them ever heard of private money, didn't know what private money was until we taught them about it. They never heard of self-directed IRAs. They didn't know what self-directed IRAs were and how they can use retirement funds to lend out and invest and get tax deferred or tax free income with no penalties. So, you know, like you say, Ray, it's being who you are. I also tell people, you know, when you have a baby, what do you talk about? That's all you can talk about is your baby, right? Or if you're old enough to be a granddaddy, that's all you can talk about is your grandchild. So I say, give birth to private money, get excited about it and talk about it because that's what people talk about is what they are excited about. And like you say, I've never pitched anybody on a deal. I teach them about private money. Um, I mean, one thing I've learned is once they learn about it, you don't have to chase the money. The money chases you, right? And so when you're a teacher and as you say, an expert and you know what you're talking about, then the money is chasing, you know, you know, speaking of money chasing us, uh, prior to COVID, there was $18 trillion in private money available that was just sitting in cash in people's retirement accounts. They didn't know what to do with it. Now on this side of COVID, there's $31 trillion in cash just sitting in people's retirement accounts. And so I know, Ray, that we have got some listeners that would love to get some private money. So let's give them a gift right now just for listening in. I'm so excited about the new private money guide I just finished writing. It's called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. If you want to get private money fast and never miss out on a real estate deal for not having the funding, you can download my private money guide at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide to get you the private money for your real estate deals. Well, Ray, back to this niche that you've got of land deals. You're doing this virtually. You're doing this from the comfort of your own home. Is your primary method for locating these deals is using direct mail and people responding to direct mail letters? Absolutely. Uh, direct mail with the offer price. And uh, when they get the offer price, they have two choices, right? They either reject it or tear it apart, or they call me back. And then up on top of that, I renegotiate again after I got the offer price. So I got a kind of like a double kill, right? So, so when you mail, so is it, is it, so it's not a postcard. You're mailing an actual letter in an envelope, right? Yeah. I, actual envelope with the offer price on it. Is the offer price, it's not on the envelope, it's inside the envelope, right? Yeah, it's inside. It's about 40 to 50 cents on the dollar. So if the land worth 10 grand, I offer about 40, uh, four grand or, or 5,500. I got you. And so how do you get the envelope opened? Uh, I, In other I words, are they, are they hand addressed or are they... What's the envelope look like? Uh, it looks like there's the two windows. Uh, you know, they can kind of see their name on there. And uh, my name is on the on the top left corner. Uh, just a standard uh, letter. It's like uh, it's not handwritten. Uh, someone printed out. Very simple. I got you. Well, that's interesting. So what would you say without revealing all your secrets? What would you what would you say is the gist of that letter? What's the flavor of that letter? Do you tell them how they got their how you got their contact information? Uh, not really. The first letter I'm just talking about, uh, you know, what my company is, and we can pay cash for your land. And the second page is just an offer, a purchase offer, so a purchase agreement. If they sign it, we send it directly to the title company. And uh, very simple, nothing really fancy. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if uh, you make it so good looking, that would be more response rate. I really haven't tested yet, but uh, I think it will be 
you know, pretty much the same. But for me, I just mail a whole lot. I mail like 20,000 a month. 20,000? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That, that, that's a lot. So how do you get your list and how do you decide who to mail to? Uh, I only, let's say this uh, subdivision, or the first step is always market selection. So I choose a market. For example, you live in North Carolina. There is a market there called Brunswick, right? Brunswick County. So I would uh, go to Brunswick County. I'll look at the data for the last three months. And I want to see which subdivision in that county have sold activity and how much it was sold. And then I would download my actually mailing letter based on that sold data because I only mail to the subdivisions that has sold in the last three months. If a subdivision in Brunswick County did not have sold, I don't even go there. So if it has, I'll go there and I'll make 40 to 55 cents on the dollar. And then I will send it to all of the subdivisions. Whoever own land in that subdivision, get my letter. So, so you're not targeting like acreage or raw land. You're targeting lots that are not built on in subdivisions. Is that right? I'm targeting more like infill lots, uh, lots nearby major growing cities. For example, if you are in Dallas, uh, I don't really target inside Dallas because it's very competitive, but I target 30 to 90 minutes away from the major growing city. It's like a donut, right? So I don't go in the middle, I go the surrounding ones. <laughs> you, say it's like, you say it's like a donut? Right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so they respond. Uh, do you ever talk to the seller or the owner of that property of uh, financing that for you, or do you always offer cash? Yeah, always over, offer cash. Uh, that's why we have an edge because uh, cash can give you like uh, so much discount, right? And uh, that's how I just tell them I buy it for cash. So what the best you can do? Okay. So does all of your records come from uh, public records, like public tax records? Uh, I download the record from this source and uh, I download the entire uh, county list and uh, I'll, uh, based on the subdivision that has sold activity, I'll mail to that. Okay. Well, that's a nugget right there. You're getting your list for these uh, lots from www.listsource.com, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Gotcha. Do you mail to them only once or do you mail to them more than once? Uh, I mail them, uh, if I have a deal, let's say I, I, I go to this county, if I have a deal, I'll mail them again, but only after three months. I made the mistake before. I mail it too soon. So the, the for example, uh, I went to this county in Texas and then I got one deal. I bought it for 20 grand and that land worth about 55,000. So I was so happy. And then I got a second deal under contract. So I haven't bought it yet. Uh, I bought, I was supposed to buy it for 28,000 and that land worth about 63 ish, something around there. So what I did was absolutely wrong. So do not do that. I got super happy. I thought if I raise the price just a little bit more, for my next mailing campaign, I might have uh, more deals coming, right? Makes sense, right? So I mailed to that county again, very soon, after like a month after I mailed the first one with a slightly higher offer. And the second guy who was under contract with me, he got my second campaign for a higher price. And he's, he said, uh, okay, since uh, it looks like uh, you are doing this, right? Not someone else. So you are telling me one thing, the market is appreciating. I'm not gonna sell it. I'm waiting for a higher price right now. So he canceled the contract. He did get a higher price from another guy, offered him 35 grand. And that guy bought for 35 and he sold it for 60. So I, I at least lost their 30 grand there. So I, I tell my student all the time, do not mail to that county unless about at least three months later, you know. That makes a lot of sense. So here's the, here's the big question. So you find a lot, uh, you got a seller, 
they're going to sell it to you for less than say 50% uh, of the value. Now is the value a retail value or is the value uh, tax value? What are you calling 50% of value? What's the definition of value? Uh, the value is uh, the market value. So uh, the tax assess value do not equal the market value. So that's a uh, tax assess value is just a reference, but it's not an indicator that's a market value. So market value is determined by buyers. So whatever uh, you see on the market is sold, sold price is pretty much the market value, right? So if a land nearby you sold for 20 grand, that's the value. So um, what resource do you use to really know what the market value is of a lot? Uh, there are two of them. One is a list source, which I just mentioned. You can download the list for the past three months. You can see everything. What's the sold price? What sub subdivision what the land was in? And uh, if you want to go more specific, you can go to Redfin. Uh, Redfin has a lot of more data, a lot of data as well, and uh, very specific, even in non disclosure states. How do you spell that, Ray? R E D F I N dot com. R E D, what is it? F I N. So redfin.com. Redfin, R E D F I N dot com. Yeah. So um, that's another nugget. Thank you for uh, sharing that, Ray. So it so you so you now own a lot. Yeah. How what's your exit strategy? How do you go about selling that lot and finding a buyer? So first of all, I would uh, you know jump on a call with my realtor. Uh, in the market, when I pick the realtor, they have to sold, they have to have a sold land in the nearby uh, area. So I pick them that way, and uh, when I talk to them, uh, I'll be like, "What is the uh, for sale price going on right now for the entire area?" So if they tell me, "Okay, Ray, the entire area, uh, we for this size of the lot, everyone is selling for let's say fifty thousand, and then we would." Uh, sell that put that land for sale for about 45 about 46 just slightly lower than the uh for sale price nearby and then we can sell it quicker very quick but initially we put everything on the market on the mls to sell them do you so you sell all the lots through the multiple listing service right absolutely i got you well it's a it's a it's a powerful yet pretty simple uh, process uh, that you have for doing this kind of business. Absolutely, uh, we our profit last year was uh, nine hundred thousand. Uh, I split uh, almost a hundred land last year, so it's very simple. Um, you know, sometimes people don't believe it, right? So you know, it's it's that simple, right? It's, yeah. What's one of the biggest lessons, or you already shared one of them, but what's another big lesson you've learned on flipping land virtually that you do you do things different now than you did when you started out? One thing you said was you don't mail to them, um, you, you don't mail to an area unless there have been sales in the past three months. You also said that you don't mail to the same list uh, in less than three months, uh, what other lessons have you learned? Uh, another thing is uh, don't do too many small deals. So I stuck there for like the, almost three years of my entire career doing small deals. Um, and also, I don't suggest people to do term deals. Uh, term deal is you buy a land and then you sell on terms. I think is that's uh, totally garbage because if you want to collect cash flow, do multifamily. Go to apartment units. Don't do land. The default rate on land is much higher than apartments. But if you want to flip land, do bigger areas. There are land selling in some type of areas. They are selling for like a hundred, a thousand bucks, or you know, a couple thousand bucks. Those ones will not give you a huge margin. Of course, you can do those there. You know, you can start there. No problem. I started there myself, uh, but I don't suggest you stay there. For long, because uh, uh, you flip one land, it doesn't make too much difference, right? So that's great. That's great. Well, Ray, this has really been intriguing and very interesting to uh, have you on. 
I'm sure we may have some listeners that want to learn more about how you actually virtually flip land. And or we may have some listeners as well that want to uh, invest with you and become investors and, and private lenders. So what's the best way for people to uh, get in contact with you, Ray? Yeah, I'm always on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is uh, right here. <laughs> I love your producer. Virtual Flip Land right here. So for Instagram, just go to Instagram, www.instagram.com forward slash virtual flip land. Or if you're on Instagram and you're in the Instagram app, then just search for virtual flip land. That's all one word, virtual, V-I-R-T-U-A-L, flip, F-L-I-P, land, L-A-N-D, to connect with my guest, Ray John. Ray, any parting comments before we call this episode a wrap? Uh, like the la one of the last things I have been struggling for about the six years of my me trying to do real real estate. Uh, I look back right now, see what why was it not working, right? I've been trying to do land for right now about 10 years. And the last four years I start to have results. What's the difference? The main difference is focus. So there are a lot of niche in real estate, and you see all the big names on YouTube or anywhere, of course, yourself, Jay, and uh, you know that people who have big results because they focus on one niche, they don't try to jump around, and today I'm going to do house, tomorrow I don't feel like houses anymore, I'm going to do apartments. So those kind of people are not going to make it too far, and uh, so even in land investing, there are a lot of different niches. You can buy and sell land like me. You can buy like a big parcel and subdivide them. And you can buy and hold. You can buy and build a ranch, right? So there are so many different things to do. Focus on one small niche and, and invest heavily there. And you'll be successful. That's great advice, Ray. Thank you so much for coming on and joining me here on Raising Private Money. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Well, there you have it, my friend, another episode of Raising Private Money. If you found this episode valuable, then be sure and share this episode with your family, friends, and colleagues that would find it of benefit. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. And if you happen to be listening on iTunes, be sure and tap the three buttons or dots at the top and, and hit follow so you don't miss out on our upcoming shows. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking you and your business to the next level. And we'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconnor.com slash money guide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide. And download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.